Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to a brand new Mod Spotlight. Today, taking a look at Dark Utilities. Dark Utilities is a newish mod. Uh, it's uh, around for 1.10. It's currently in the Direwolf20 mod pack. And I wanted to make sure to spotlight it for you guys so you saw all the cool stuff that it has and how to use it. So, without further ado, let's get started. Dark Utilities is one of those mods that adds a bunch of cool nifty things. So unlike a mod like Batania, where it has a whole concept and a whole power system, or a mod like uh, Ender.io, which is all RF power based and has a whole bunch of progression, Dark Utilities doesn't really have a whole lot of progression. It just adds a bunch of cool nifty things that are helpful to have. And a lot of those things are built around mob spawning and trapping, but other things are pretty cool too. Let's get started taking a look. So the first things I want to show you are these guys, the three that I showed at the intro of the video. These are your velocity plates. Basically, they work to move any entity placed on top of them in the direction of the arrow. It's pretty straightforward. Even items go down this line. Boom. And the three uh, speeds are shown here. So the basic vector plate, okay, um, and then you can get that upgraded to the fast vector plates, and you can also get it upgraded to the even faster extreme vector plates. And notice that it's just a direct translation, right? So one extreme vector plate comes from one fast. So all you gotta do is craft them together, right? Like green turns into yellow, yellow turns into red, and red turns back into green. Pretty cool. Um, and then obviously their, their main feature there is their speed. The other thing that I'm gonna show you guys probably once or twice, but then maybe go into a little bit more, pretty much every item in the game has an in-game description on this information tab in JEI. So if you have JEI installed, you're going to have um, this information screen shown up to you. So you can see here, fast, slow, etc. Pushes mobs extremely fast in the direction of points. Sneaking mobs are not affected. Um, so that's just a little tip for you. If you sneak, you won't be affected. Cool. Um, so those are the vector plates. Definitely useful for setting up like mob traps and stuff. And yes, mobs can spawn on these things. Um, so if you do have it being dark time and it's nighttime out and you want mobs to spawn, they will spawn on top of these vector plates. So these are very useful to set up in a mob spawner type situation. They might also be fun to use as a pathway between locations in your base. It might be really fun to set up like a little vector plate like uh, set up here to kind of go down and go from one area to another. That could be a lot of fun. So you could just, uh, you know, exit your base one side and then boom, get zipped along to the other paths. Neat. Hey, there you go. If you uh, put a couple green to slow you down before you hit that corner, you'll definitely take that corner just fine. Nice. The next set of objects I'd like to show you are traps. Uh, look up the recipe and hit the info tab to find out what they are. These traps will apply an effect to a mob when they stand on it. For example, the slowness trap will give a slowness effect. And there's pretty much a trap for every type of uh, negative potion effect. So there's poison, weakness, damage, slowness, flame, and wither. Um, so if you throw down the slowness trap, Boom, as soon as you stand on it, you're getting slowness three. Oh, that's awful. Um, and then of course, when you get off of it, that slowness effect will be removed. So as long as you're standing on it, you have that effect on you at all times. Pretty cool. So you could use your vector plates in combination with these traps to push mobs onto traps to weaken them in interesting ways. Uh, you can also throw down a damage trap that'll hurt anything that's standing on it. Um, and then of course, you've got like your weakness trap to give you weakness, poison to give you poison, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So pretty much any entity that passes over these traps are gonna get the debuff that's indicated on the tooltip. Flame traps will light you on fire. Ouch. And withering traps uh, gives you the weather debuff. Ouch. So yeah, lots of fun stuff can be done with these cool traps. The Ender Tether. Pretty nice little toy. You just place it down the world like a torch. Works pretty well, too. What does it do? I'm glad you asked. It prevents Endermen from teleporting away. I love it. So basically, if there's any Endermen nearby, and they try to teleport away from you, they're going to get teleported right to that tether instead of teleported away from you. See how they bounced right back instead of teleporting away from me? And it's daytime. You know endermen like to run away during the day. Not going to happen if there's an ender tele tether nearby. Um, it also might prevent other forms of ender teleportation in the area. So do watch out. Notice how I'm throwing ender pearls, and instead of standing uh, or landing where the ender pearl landed, I'm landing where the ender tether is. So, yeah, not going to work. The next set of items are also really pretty cool and useful for, you guessed it, fighting monsters. These are mob filters. Mob filters are neat. Basically what they are are blocks that only certain types of mobs can pass through. So for example, if you were to get, and this is useful for animal farming, uh, the baby filter, uh, 
only babies are allowed to pass through the block. Um, so it's a solid block that exists in the world. So let's go ahead and try out that uh, baby filter. Where'd it go? There it is. Cool. Um, so the baby filter would go here. And now this is a solid block to any creature that's not a baby animal. Neat. So uh, watch this, right? So we're gonna dig out the space under here. And if we had uh, two cows, one, two, and cross your fingers that this works, the baby fell right through because it's a non-solid block to baby animals. And you can see that there's a bunch of different options for this. So there's the player filter. Players will see it as a transparent block. There's also inverted versions of these. So the inverted version of the player block um, prevents, uh, so for example, with this, the baby filter allows anything but baby mobs to move through it, right? So um, with the inverted version, basically the player sees it as solid, but every other entity in the world, it's transparent, right? So if we were to have a zombie here, he thinks it's solid, but then when he walks on it, he falls right through. Because this is the player version of uh, the inverted block. Neat, right? So the inverted mob filter means that only the thing listed on it, and then the regular mob filter means that only the thing listed on it falls through. Cool? There's mob filters for players, for, mob, for uh, undead mobs, arthropods, which I guess are spiders, hostile mobs, animals, water, babies, pets, slimes, fire resistant mobs, and finally boss type mobs. And then of course there's the same inverse version for all those as well. Similar to the mob filters, you've got item filters, um, or item grates they're called. These basically are transparent for items, but not for any other living creature, right? So if you take a look at the info tab, allows items to move through it, but prevents other entities. So this is a great way to make it so that, you know, you can put this underneath your animals. You can put a bunch of them underneath your animals and then have items fall through if animals are dropping items. So like maybe a good way to do an egg farm, for example. Um, the eggs would fall through, the chickens would not. Anybody that's played with redstone has had the need for a simple redstone timer. This is all this is the timer block. Basic redstone timer causes a short redstone pulse every few ticks. If you right click on it, you can specify it in ticks. Remember there's 20 ticks in a second, so 10 seconds is 200 ticks, 100 ticks is five seconds, et cetera, et cetera. It lets you know in here. Um, press the done button or enter key to save the settings. The minimum is 10 and the maximum is 12,000. Cool. And that's just a, a little timer that will emit a redstone pulse every so many seconds, currently set to five. I don't know about you guys, but I have definitely built in caves that I didn't realize were slime chunks, and then were annoyed to find that there were slimes spawning all over my slime chunks. And I'm like, man, do I have to move the cave? Remember this happened to me on Forgecraft with my industrial craft area? Slimes were spawning all over the place. Luckily, we've now got a block called the anti-slime block. It does what it says on the tin. Prevent slimes from spawning near the block. Dude, that is awesome. Am I wrong in thinking that I've never seen any other mod have that feature? I mean, I'm not saying that no mod on the planet has had that feature before, but no mod that I've ever used has had an anti-slime block that I can think of. Vanilla Minecraft redstone experts know how to build a block update detector in vanilla Minecraft. Um, however, those of you who are not so experienced may not even know what a block update detector is. Basically, all it is is a block that updates uh, or, or triggers a redstone signal when an adjacent block updates. So notice how me placing a uh, piece of dirt or breaking a piece of dirt next to this thing triggers a redstone signal. The ones on the corner do not. So it's on the it's on the four cardinal sides of the thing. Um, even on the top and bottom, it looks like it works too. Nice. So this will basically emit a redstone signal when the block update occurs on any side. So pretty neat. Tilling doesn't count, but placing seeds does. Note that tilling the block next to the block update detector does count though. The sneaky block. Sneaky blocks are cool because it's pretty much like stone, except you can click on it with any other block and it'll steal that model of that block. It's pretty cool. So for example, if we want this thing to look like dirt, we can make it look like dirt. If we wanted to make it look like wood, we can make it look like wood. If we wanted to make it look like sand, we can make it look like sand. Cool. Notice that it's still stone. So breaking the sand, quote unquote, with a shovel isn't gonna work. Breaking it with a pickaxe will. Neat. And you might be saying to yourself, Dyer, that sounds like it's, uh, I don't get it. Why would I use that? Well, because there's a bunch of other sneaky stuff. For example, the sneaky lever. The sneaky lever is a lever that looks like sand. Haha. <laughs> and uh, if you were to go ahead and get some redstone dust, right click on the sand block, as it were, or the wooden planks. Pretty cool, right? 
Neat, right? So that's the sneaky lever. There's also a sneaky false block. Sneaky, sneaky, it's a block that you can fall right through. So it's fake, it's not really a block. Um, so for example, let's get ourselves our sneaky false block and make it look like grass. Not that grass. All right, so grass doesn't work so well, but you get the gist. There's also a sneaky pressure plate, cool. And if we put some redstone next to this thing, notice that when I'm standing on top of this solid block, it's emitting a redstone signal. Cool. So if you had like a wood floor and you wanted to emit a pressure plate uh, signal whenever a player walked on top of it, it would be pretty easy, right? All you do is, uh, you know, place this guy next to your wood floor, make him sneaky with a wooden plank, and then put redstone next to him. And whenever you're standing on that wooden plank, it's emitting a redstone signal. Pretty cool, huh? There's also this nifty gadget, which is called a sneaky torch. It does exactly like it says. It's a normal torch, however you can hide it. So if you want to hide a torch on the ground, there you go. And this thing's emitting light. There's also sneaky obsidian. Basically has the, you know, breaking strength of obsidian. So it takes a while to mine. All in all, those sneaky blocks are pretty cool. Like, I could definitely use the sneaky lever a lot to hide a lever in a wall and you'd never know it's there. And you just right click on the correct block and it opens up a secret passage or something cool like that. And the sneaky pressure plate, also super useful to use. Nice. The feeder is a neat block. Basically it'll auto feed animals nearby. You place it down in the world and you put some food into it and it'll automatically feed the food to nearby animals. Nice. Uh, it can hold up to 10 pieces of food at any given time, and you can see visually on the block how full it is. It can only hold one type of food at a time, so don't try and put wheat and carrots in there together. And that is the feeder. Hey guys, look, I put TNT in my base. Nope, not really. <laughs> that, my friends, is fake TNT. Basically, um, it's made with wool and gunpowder, and it's just a really weak version of TNT that won't break any blocks. Good for pranks. You guys ever notice how long it takes to walk through an obsidian nether portal? Come on, get me to the nether already. Let's go. Boy, that took a while. That was an asshole, wasn't it? If you wish you could travel through portals faster, get yourself a portal charm, which by the way, apparently is a bobble and it can go into your bobble slot. Basically, it makes the obsidian portal into the nether instantaneous. So whenever you walk through it, it instantly teleports you between uh, destinations. Saves you that little loading animation thing. Kind of neat. Oh no, it's dark out. I better sleep, but I'm outside. I hope I can sleep quickly. Oh yeah, okay, that was quick. Ha, <laughs> thanks sleep charm. The shulker pearl is a shiny pearl harvested by right clicking on a shulker, and you can go ahead and use it to create a nifty thing called a pearl block. Cool. These pearl blocks are just kind of nifty little decorative blocks. Nothing too fancy about them. Um, that's all it is. Gives off a bright light though, so that's nice. Um, and then there's brick versions and carved brick and all that good stuff. The Null Charm, pretty nice little device. Uh, obsidian, an unstable ender pearl, and a regular ender pearl. Unstable ender pearl, by the way, comes from wither dust, which you get three of when you get a wither skeleton skull. Cool. This thing, when you shift right click, can specify items, and uh, any items in the specification will basically be voided whenever they're picked up by the player. Nice. So if you go mining and you have a ton of cobble that you don't want to pick up, just put it in the null charm. You'll notice that there's uh, several slots to list. So if you wanted to have the same thing happen with dirt, not a problem. Buy dirt. And again, this can be worn as a bauble. The focus sash might be a nice little way to stay alive. Um, it will basically prevent you from being one hit by a monster and killed instantly. The Ender Hopper is a nice little way to automatically pick up nearby items. Simply place it on top of a chest. Sneak right click on it to show the radius of uh, the area that it will pick up from. And then any items in the area will automatically be picked up by the Ender Hopper, zoink, and sucked into the chest. Pretty cool, right? Not bad. Uh, sneak right click again to remove that. Cool. Oh, and it should be noted that you don't have to have that up and running in order for the pickup to happen. It's only to show the radius of how far it can pick up from. Neat. There are eight decorative chests that are available in Dark Utilities. Uh, there's the Glacial, the Glass, the Jungle, the Mystic, 
the nether, the royal, the sandstone, and the prismarine. These function just like regular chests. All they are is just a retexture. They just give you options for if you're building in special areas. So like if you were building like a sand temple and you wanted to go with this or some kind of underwater area, this would be a nice chest to use. They literally function exactly like a regular vanilla chest, including the size. They are just a decorative option. There are a set of seven rings that are available to you that will boost the enchantments of existing items. These rings have to be stored either in your offhand slot or in a bobble slot. So for example, the Pyromancer's ring gives you a fire aspect of one. So if you were to go ahead and throw your Pyromancer's ring into your ring slot, your sword should now have the fire aspect ability on it. So if we were to go ahead and spawn a spider, note that he's getting lit on fire. Nice. That's pretty cool. Um, there are seven, like I said. So there's efficiency. That one basically gives you the efficiency ability. Depth Strider, Knockback, Protection, Luck of the Sea, and Frost Walker. These all apply the same enchants that you would get, and it boosts it by one. So if you had, um, and it says here on the tooltip, uh, for example, if you have a sword with Fire Aspect 2, the ring will raise it to Fire Aspect 3, because the sword has two on it, plus one from the ring makes it three. Pretty cool. If you had efficiency five and you threw a ring on here, totally now have efficiency six. Nice. Two more charms to show you guys. The first one is the gluttony charm. Basically lets you eat faster. Wow, that was quick. Um, it also says on the tooltip to be careful because uh, you may eat more than you intend to with this charm. So just be a little careful with it, but uh, definitely makes you eat faster. Kind of neat. And then finally, the aggression charm. This one, according to the tooltip, increases the aggression range of the player. Normally, only the mob being hit will aggro to you, but this will make all mobs of a similar type aggro. I have no idea why you would want this charm on you. That sounds horrible, but whatever. So I guess it basically takes the same thing that pigmen do, right? If you hit one pigmen, they all hate you. It does the same thing to all other mobs, right? So it uh, affects zombies and spiders and all that. It'll make all nearby zombies come after you when you hit one. Why would you ever do that? I don't know but there must be a reason. Uh, and that's about it for the Dark Utilities Mod Spotlight. Bunch of cool little nifty little gadgets. I definitely like the mob filters and the inverted mob filters, the item grate, the vector plates. All these things are pretty cool. The traps are pretty neat as well. Um, pretty much all the good stuff in there. There's, there. It's a pretty cool mod. Definitely recommend you guys checking it out. Like I said, it is part of the Darwell 20 pack. And for now, Darwell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the spotlight and take it easy.